My name is Dr. Glenn T. Martin, and this is my home here at Radford University. I've been here for 30 years. Uh, I'm chair of the Peace Studies program. We have an interdisciplinary program in Peace Studies and a professor of philosophy here at Radford. And we are here, ladies and gentlemen, as educators, teachers, students alike, all of us concerned about the future. The question that we're really here for is, do we have a future? It's serious. We're in a serious situation here in the early 21st century. We recognize that we need to build a new world because the old world has failed and is in many respects hopelessly broken and fragmented. In this respect, I think we are all, everybody here is a ray of light. We're all rays of light in the darkness and ignorance of these times. Worldwide, darkness and ignorance. And we struggle to overcome the oppression, the greed, the war, the bigotry, the hatred, the ignorance, and the fear. Many of you who came here were co-sponsors and worked very hard to get the word out about this momentous conference. Indeed, the word went out very widely, even internationally. Many people heard about it. Yet, as we here in Radford began to see that registration was not happening as expected, the Reverend Laura George and I, who are co-organizers of this conference, understood that the conference can be made intensive, dynamic and transformational, rather than simply extensive. And that often is even better, much better. How could we have started with such a wonderful music if it was a big audience and, and a big auditorium? It could be the focal point for networking, interacting, resonating, and laying the foundations for an ongoing Building the New World movement. And it could be a celebration and a festival. That is what we will be doing beginning this weekend. The Building the New World website will expand. It will stay up. And we will be working with the videotapes, archiving them and distributing them to everybody. And we will work, be working to build the new world and extend this movement. Uh, ultimately, our goal is world transformation. It has to be world transformation. And all of us in this room probably are comfortable in whatever niche we happen to be living in in the world. But 60% of the world's population are living in hell, real hell. And I've been there, I've seen that in many places in the world. And we need a different world, we need a new world. So I hope this conference will result in genuine recommendations about how we can change our ways of living and thinking on this planet. I believe that the vision of how to proceed into the future follows directly from the new creative holism that I expect will be everywhere present at this wonderful event. It is the mission of civilization, Robin Dradath Tagore said, to create harmony among people and to establish peace in the world. I believe this conference will present a number of interrelated political economic, ethical, practical, psychological, and spiritual approaches to transformation that will contribute significantly to this mission of civilization. All these approaches are mutually integral and ultimately inseparable. We are holistic expressions of being. We are microcosms of the macrocosm, as Barbara Marx Hubbard has written, and uh, she's here with us today. Uh, and the quest for <laughs> and the quest for human liberation is not on many levels a having to choose from a recipe of equally undesirable evils. We don't want to choose among undesirable evils like we in the United States have to do every four years when we choose a president. All paths to liberation belong together in the microcosm that is humanity. 
In short, we need transformation of our institutions, our cultures, our spiritual lives, and ourselves. There is nothing utopian about this in the negative sense of the word. The possibilities for transformation are very concrete and they're real. They are being expressed and implemented and lived at this very moment in many sectors of human endeavor across the globe, including within the wonderful intentional communities who are so well represented here at this conference. We need the vision of a practical utopia, a pragmatic and concrete vision of how we can actualize our very real human potential. The fate of the earth and the future of our children depends on our ability to make these changes in a significant way within the relatively near future. In terms of my personal life's mission, I hope all of you will recognize these possibilities in the Constitution for the Federation of Earth, which will be everywhere available at this conference. The Earth Constitution embodies the holism of our planet, our biosphere, and our humanity, not only conceptually, but organizationally. We need more than anything else, in my view, not an abstract set of values that may someday become realized on the Earth, what we really need is a concrete document that shows us how to govern ourselves in a practical and superbly organized manner. In our presentation on holism in the Earth Constitution tomorrow, my colleague Eugenia Allman and I will try to show you how this applies to that Constitution. Holism is not merely an intellectual perception of harmony, for in harmony we are included in the holes that we discern. And we discern these souls with a deeper level of our being than merely intellectually. We discern the holism of our humanity, of the earth that we live on, of our cosmos, and of the divine. Holism means not only reason, but love. Indeed, it is the synthesis of reason, intuition, and love. In a new way, the paradigm shift to holism can be akin to a religious conversion. Suddenly we see in a new way. We understand everything in a new light. We begin to discern the reasons for hope and joy and celebration everywhere. It is my sincere hope that this conference will contribute to this conversion on behalf of our common human project. In closing, I want to thank Radford University Conference Services for doing their best under what were initially very difficult circumstances. The uh, long-term director of that suddenly left here and they had to scramble to get a new director who is very recently hired, but she's wonderful and they're doing a wonderful job. And I also want to recognize the tremendous hard work of my good friend, Reverend Laura George, on all aspects of this project that has been developing for nearly two years. <laughs> Without her, it could not have happened. And I want to recognize again our guest of honor, Barbara Marks Hubbard, and all of the eminent speakers who have gone out of their way to be with us today. Thank you all of you, participants, visitors, speakers, and volunteer workers coming to share this unique opportunity together with all of us. We want to make your visit here comfortable, and if you have anything that you need at all, see us or see conference services, because if you're comfortable, you can be focusing on building the new world, and that's what we want to focus on. <laughs>